Welcome back everyone to Nanaliza a Dawn, I remain your host Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are going to be going to a match between Kingstad and Gorda on Living Lands. This is an interesting setup because Kingstad, very strong player, but Gorda is Gorda. They're, they're, they're called God for a reason, they are. It is not a misnomer, they are not being cocky, they are historically the best player in pretty much any Total Annihilation derived game. Like Zero K, Planetary Annihilation, was a, what was another one back in the day? Actually, Acrum back in the day, but that's a tiny little game that no one played. But still, I know I say that being the main caster for that game, but it was a tiny little game no one played. Don't worry about it. Zero K, on the other hand, is a less tiny game that actually hundreds of people have been playing daily, which is cool. Since the Steam release, at least. So, hey, that's awesome. Anyway, Gota and King's Dead. So, Gota is going to be going for the Jump Bot Factory. King's Dead for the Spider Bot Factory. Two rather unusual factory choices. I love it! Two of my favorite factories in the game. I mean, more so the spider than jump, but they're both cool. Anyway, Fleas got coming in from Kingstad. Fairly st standard start from that, because of course you want to make sure with, you know what's going on, and Fleas are nice and cheap. While well, at the same time, the puppy coming in from Gota, more as a defense than anything else. Kind of surprised you don't see multiple puppies coming in here. But at the same time, those Fleas not managing to find too much on the Constables. The Constables do manage to get out of there. I mean, this one's still 250 HP. Not bad. Half health. I mean, it's able to get inside range of the Lotuses, and the Fleas cannot fight under defense towers, so good job there. And really, Gota being very worker-heavy here. Going for the Pyro eventually, but just relying on the Constable Snow Slobium on top of their commander to hold hold initial assaults off. And considering they are fighting against the, the Spider-Bot Factory, it makes sense. I mean, the Spider-Bot Factory, other than Fleas, doesn't really have a whole lot that that's fast. So Pyros can just come in and do their thing. Actually, at this point, the Pyros are going to have a fairly easy time because it is the Spider Factory. Redbacks are a good choice. I like that Kingstead went for that. Against Pyros, that is going to have a reasonably easy time. It's still going to be a bit tricky. The pyro range is not short, but redbacks should be able to just get away from it. It's Redbacks are slower, yes. I mean, speed 54 to 90, so it will be the pyros catching up eventually. And that's just more a matter of weapon range. And weapon range is about the same. It's just more that there is a bit of room for that redback to get in and deal a lot of damage. The DPS, however, is actually about the same. 64 versus 60. So yeah, the redback... Wait, no, I was entirely wrong then. Why do I think the redback would be better off? Oh yeah, because it's way more HP. That's why I think it'd be better off. And also because the Pyro's damage is largely dealt in damage over time, and the Redback won't die immediately. So yeah, Redback, good choice against that. And then when the Venom comes on top of that and you get the stuns, that's perfect. Although Widow coming in very... Wow, that's an early Widow. Is Kingstead going for a Commander Snipe? I didn't think he went for a Commander Snipe. I mean, Redback, one Redback, one Venom, I don't know. But the Widow, if you get enough support forces on that, yeah, you could get a Commander Snipe. I just can't think of any other heavy units that would justify the use of the Widow. The Venom's going to be enough to deal with the Pyros. And the Redback as well. I mean, the Redback on its own is already really strong, just for how quickly it's able to get its gun aimed, if nothing else. However, the Redback likely will go down, but not without cost. Goda already losing a Constable and a Pyro. This entire, well, this small force, this entire force, the entirety of King's Dad's army will now die. All two of them. But there are more army coming in. Actually, there's... Just the Recluse and Redbacks. Yeah, that's the thing. This, this stage in the game, we have 17 metal per second. King's not actually not putting a lot of characters up yet. Much more focus on getting the energy up, which I totally agree with. But at the same time, they are accessing metal, and I'm sure they're well aware of it. I mean, it's got to be kind of pressure for them, just because they are playing against pretty much the best player. And they know it. Actually, I think they're holding their own really well, considering. It's just, it is obviously a little bit of a pressure situation to work with. That being said, though, King said is managing to maintain a reasonably strong economy. Stronger than Gorda, actually. The only weakness right now is production, and even then, Kingstad's doing a great job making sure they have the energy to use the production. Once they get more caretakers up, they should be fine. Or, heck, just use the commander, set up the factory, use that to burn the excess metal, and from there you'll be fine. We're not seeing that, though. We are seeing the Weaver at the front building up defensive structures to make it a little bit harder for Gorda to get in there. Not going to be hard enough. Two Pyros can get through a Lotus, no problem, and the Pyros just don't even want to fight it. Oh, never mind, they do. But that's fine, because like I said, they can get through a Lotus, no problem. I mean, the Lotus is getting repaired, and actually, that repair is going to be a bit of an issue. And the second... Ooh, the second Lotus. That's what it is. That's the key. Get that second Lotus going, but the Weaver... Oh, the Weaver, no! You committed suicide! Why? There are so many more productive ways to commit suicide than what you did. That was not the best option. Actually, I kind of get the impression that that Widow is actually intended to be used to take out some Pyros if they get a little too cocky. But at the same time, with the support forces coming in... I might just be to make sure that Gold has to remain scared, has to set up defenses, their commander cannot be super aggressive. And the commander coming in with a machine gun that would stop any fleas that got close, but then so will the Lotuses. At this point, the Widow cannot really find a whole lot of mileage, because there just aren't the support forces to kill the commander if the Widow finds his mark. 
At the same time, though, Golda coming in here. Constable Pyro Mix. Slow beam on top of Flames. Nice thinking there. It'll get rid of the Lotus, no problem. However, Kingstad's commander is at least helping defend a touch, but that is an unupgraded commander. It will not last long if the Pyros go for it. Golda's just figuring, save units up. Get a large army. Don't waste anything. Just find places that can be poked into. Be careful about it. Then when you're done, when you found the right position, then go in for the kill. Which is a clever little strategy. Not a lot of players do that in this game because units, yeah, they are expensive to build, but oftentimes they do die so quickly that it's difficult to micro them around. It's not impossible, but it, it, it's, a, it's surprising, actually, just how much value you can get if you do micro units a little bit in this game. And Gorda realizes this. Gorda's actually always been a very strong micro player to that end. At the same time, though, this could still be a bit of an issue. One of these pyros might go down to the Widow. Yes, there it is. There's the Widow coming in here and doing his job. And that leaves the Recluse perfectly open to deal with that Pyro if it were actually able to hit. But it is at least able to hit enough. The Pyro down. That should open things up for Kingstad a touch. And again, Kingstad does have a lot of, to work with in terms of economy. They just don't have a lot of production. And that's the one thing. One more Caretaker. One more Caretaker and they'd be just absolutely swell. They'd be perfect. And even with, with what they have now, it should be fine. The Redbacks coming in here should be able to take care of the Constables, or at least push them away. The Jack... Ooh, that Jack, though. That Jack, though. That Jack plus the Pyros mean the Redbacks cannot do much. That's going to mean King's Commander has, is forced to retreat and probably will go down in the process, actually. The Recluses have nothing to stop them. The Widow is not in position. Is trying to go for Gold's Commander instead, but King's going to lose their Commander, trying to get that kill. Gold's Commander at least being taken out in the process, and there's the Fleas. As Gold's Commander was just out of position of the defense turrets, that means they go down. Go to losing their commander, they lose their storage. They're now at about a third of the economy at Kingstead, but Kingstead losing their commander as well, which again means they lose storage, which they lose 500 metal as a result of that. Still, though, Kingstead does have twice the economy at Golda. It's just the caretaker, it's just the production. If one of the Weavers goes back here, builds a caretaker or two, they will be fine. I don't know why they aren't, though. I think they're focusing much more on on map building, like using their money to get metal extractors, get storages, get all this other stuff, and not thinking about it in terms of getting more production in their factories. But the problem is that if they had the production, they'd be in a much better position to deal with Gota. Because again, Gota is such a good micro player in general. I mean, that that commander, that was just a really clever play by Kingstad with the Venom to, or the Widow to make sure that the, King, the commander did not stay alive. But yeah, generally speaking, Gota is such a strong micro player that you want to make sure you are outvaluing them just by money. You're not going to outvalue them by actual fighting most of the time, but you are possibly going to be able to outexpand them, which Kingstad had done. The problem again just comes down to production. Still, though, that Widow did do its job. It, unfortunately, at the loss of the commander for Kingstad, but again, the trade was favorable for now, but it, again, it's just a matter of whether or not Kingstad can actually turn that economy into real value, and considering that Golda already had the army of constables up front, they've got that reclaim going strong. They've got it on lock, and that's, I suppose, the biggest problem here, is that because of all that reclaim that's available for Golda, and Golda actually taking advantage of it, well, that's the metal advantage that they need. Kingstad at least does have some economy to work with. They do have the rocks they're getting as well. They do have more metal extractors. So, Goda's really just managing to stay even as a result of using that economy. They're not so much managing to get ahead. And if these puppies don't end up getting much value, which the Redbacks seem to be per actually making absolute sure of, that's going to be even better for Kingstad. And Goda, on the other hand, they do have the production, some of the production capacity, but not enough, and certainly not enough energy. So Kingstead, they are still in a strong position economically, even with the damage they've taken. It's just a matter of finding that value against the units and against the defenses. They have the Recluses, they have the Redbacks, they have the Venoms, they have the options from there to get through those Lotuses. That is the key thing. If they can do that, that will likely be a strong position to make this game. Goda has been so far behind in their economy that it's just a matter of time for Kingstead, provided they keep themselves alive. They do need to be careful, but they have the money to at least throw stuff away. They can be a little bit less than perfectly careful. They can go for tr valuable trades rather than just trying to keep the units alive as long as possible, which Golda has been doing to great effect, I'll grant you. But still, good trades where you can get position and then get economy and turn that into more units, that's often more worth it than just keeping your own units alive. And that's what I meant before, is that you often see players do suicide units in order to gain territory, because so long as you can hold that territory with the next wave of units, you're still fine. It's often worthwhile to not do that, but it's more often than not worthwhile to just do it, and you're in an even better position. And there's that Weaver coming in there. I love to see that Kingstad getting in and building behind their forces. That's exactly what I want to see people do, and I love it when people do it, because it's perfect. That's the great use of the resources, because of course, that's exactly what I said. You get those metal extractors, and you use that to continue building a larger army, and Kingstad has been running a metal advantage against Gorda for the entire game. Again, I would like to see one more Caretaker at home. That's the only thing I'd like to see changed here. 
But even with that, the, the stuff that King's Head's built up, the defenses King's Head's built up, have been quite robust. Unfortunately, the Stardust was too low. The terraforming platform, not quite hot enough to avoid the Jack Spear. Still enough to at least make the Jack pay, but that's a bit of a problem. Second wave coming in here, another Jack and no Stardust to answer for it. And unfortunately, King's Head, they have to reclaim the Stardust to want to use that platform. And again, that platform is not in a great position. But hey, again, King's Head does have enough money. It's just, please, please build another Caretaker. You'd have won by now if you built another Caretaker. Ah! Like, that would have been amazing. I'm not sure why that happened, though. But, yeah, it's just... I've done that all the time myself. I totally understand. You get you get excited about the frontline fight, and you forget the fact that your backline is actually not producing anywhere near as much as it should be. But even then, Kingstad does still have a production advantage on top of the economic advantage, so they're not done yet. It's just a mild shame because they are accessing quite a bit. However, at the same time, they are managing to get in a fair fairly good shot to go to base. And there's not much able to defend it either. The Firewalker is still 20 seconds away. These powers coming in here, however, are going to have a bit of an easy time. And the Redback will be able to get rid of one. The Venom should be able to help the other, but that Redback is going to die in the process. It will burn to death. And unfortunately, that's not going to be enough for the Recluses to stay in and actually get rid of the Factory, get rid of the Firewalker. Especially now that the Firewalker is done, this entire army is going to go up in flames. I do appreciate the Venom's work there, though. At the very least, it will be able to stop that Jack. It is doing God's work. But so is the Firewalker, as it is able to get rid of this Recluse. Finish off the entire army. And this Jack is the only casualty, at, well, that and a couple Pyros, for Golda. But their main base is perfectly fine otherwise. Totally worth the defense, and at this point, all the reclaim is inside of Golda's base. All 1,000 of it, or 900 of it, actually. At the same time, though, Kingstad, while well, they did lose the Northwest expansion, they do still have a bit of territory control over that. So long as they can get a Weaver up there in reasonably quick time, they should be able to get in and start building up. And actually, they do. No, they don't have a Weaver up there. They do not. They have a bunch of other units, no Weavers. If they can get a Weaver up there, they'd be fine. At least they can stop the Constables. That's something. If they can at least keep their position, at least avoid Golda expanding into there, that's still good. King's Dad's actually been doing a great job raiding, and that has been why they've been staying in this game for so long. Because they've been keeping Golda from expanding, because they've been keeping Golda from setting up their expansions, that they, their bases that they want, and getting that metal. And the only thing Golda's really been able to do to get themselves a slight metal advantage has been Reclaim. And now that that Reclaim field in the center of the map has been taken, largely by Golda, granted, it's basically going to be a matter of static economy for the time being. I mean, Golda's army of, of constables is up front doing its job, and there are still three of them, but they're kind of spread out, but not really going into Reclaim, and anytime one of them gets close to the Reclaim fields, well, King's Dad's totally in position to stop it. Problem, of course, being that Firewalker will be able to stop the Recluses, and as a result, that's going to open up the entire Northwest, and nothing was built there in the meantime. However, there it is. There's that caretaker I was looking for. Would have liked to see it about five minutes ago, but it's there now. That's a thing. It exists. So let's see how that pans out. At this point, though, I'm not too confident for King's Dad in the center. Golda did manage to take that, and now they've got, what, 1,400 metal reclaim in the center. Actually, I think I counted the sides. Nope, 1,400 in the center. That's all Golda's. Yeah, so Golda's going to be able to actually maintain economic parity at this point, and they do have 20 metal per second, equal production capacity to King's Dad. Although King's Dad, with this caretaker being done, will actually be able to take advantage of the higher metal economy they have. So King's Dad should be able to win a bit of a victory when it comes to actual production, it's just a matter of whether or not this caretaker decides to assist the factory. And indeed it does! Good micro there. Uh, good caretaker micro there, King's Dad. Make sure it doesn't automatically just help build or repair anything else. Goes for the factory immediately. That means the crab is up, but this is a bit of a bad time for a crab. The jacks will be able to swarm the crab and tear it apart. Because remember, that was this? 600? No, it's 300 damage for the spike. And that's a freaking amount of damage. Like, that's 300 damage per second. Crabs, they do have 4,000 HP. It's effectively 12,000 when you have the curled up crab. But even then, that's not all that much. When you consider 300 damage per second, that's 20 seconds. No, that's 40 seconds when curled up. Which is not a terribly long time. That's per jack. So you get two or three jacks in there. That's going to be 20 seconds, 13 seconds maybe. It's not going to last that long. I do appreciate the fact that there's more fleas coming in from Kingstad and the Weaver coming in to at least help secure the Northwest again. Keeping Kingstad ahead. And now that Kingstad has the Caretaker, they will be able to outproduce Golda. While Golda, on the other hand, they don't have the money, they do have the available constables, should they get more off the reclaim. But at this point, it's just a matter of that firewalker. If that firewalker can go down, there is a shot. But again, here it is, here's the jack, it's just the jack's coming in here, that's exactly what I was talking about. That crab is not going to last more than another 10 seconds. The flea's doing what they can, but jack's has way too much HP. And again, the, again, Venom's doing what they can, but the jack's, again, have too much HP. The crab will at least be stunned before the jacks die, if not die itself, and it has no chance of getting the firewalker in the process. So that is a bit of a shame, exactly as I thought would happen. 
The, cra the Jack's going to be in here and able to just tear everything apart. So Gordo with that Firewalker, just showing why people will go to the Jump Bot Factory specifically for the Firewalker. Because, hey, Firewalker is Firewalker. It is pretty much the strongest artillery piece in the game. Just because it can saturate an entire area with fire. For anything light, wind generators, fleas, raiders in general, it is great at tearing that apart. Speaking of fleas, though, over the northeast side of the map, there is a slight attack coming in from Kingstad, but it won't be able to find much value. Gota being very smart with these walls of solar panels, and Kingstad not actually microing any one of them, or microing against any one of them, so the fleas cannot deal with that. Bit of a shame, too, because if those fleas were able to get in, they'd be able to take out at least one or two metal extractors, maybe a couple wind generators. That would have been very valuable had they found a way in, but they didn't. They failed to find ingress, and with that, Gorda, now that they have the economic advantage off the reclaim from the center of the map, they do have the production capacity, theoretically at least, but the constable's being used for the reclaim instead. However, Kingstead, ooh, Kingstead also getting the reclaim, so hey, it's actually pretty, it's evening out pretty well. The reclaim over the northwest side of the map off the jack that we saw fighting five minutes ago, now going to Kingstead. Again, Kingstead accessing a little bit, could use another caretaker or two, but at least they're not accessing too much. So, hey, Kingstad is in a reasonably good spot right now, economically. It's just a matter of getting rid of the Firewalker and getting rid of the Jacks, because the problem right now is that all these Jacks and Firewalkers coming in from Gorda, and they are continuing to come in. That is Gorda's main force right now. That is keeping so much pressure on Kingstad, they cannot easily build up the force they want. Like, the Crab is a good option, but it, can't, it could not get to that Firewalker. However, the, the Widow can, but the Fire... Oh, the Reckless is not quite in range. At least they does stop the Firewalker. It would have been nice if that came up sooner, but hey, it's here. That is great. The Firewalker is at least not in the fight. It's not going to be tear torn apart by the Recklesses, but it won't be able to tear apart the Recklesses in the process, allowing them to take care of the Pyros, allowing them possibly to take care of the Jacks as well. And that's that's an opening. That's exactly what Kingstead needed. And the Widow, I believe, survived that encounter as well. So, it yeah, it did. Right here. So that Widow can just fire again. The Firewalker's back up, but as long as the Widow doesn't get hit in the fire of the Firewalker, in the Saturation Bomb, it should be able to hit the Firewalker once more, and then from there make it even harder for Gorda to maintain the position on the center of the map. However, there's that fire. It does miss the Widow. That does leave the opening. And as long as that Widow can get in without getting decloaked, and bear in mind, it has a very small decloak radius, so it could theoretically... Ooh, and Kingstead notices the opening, but the Jack will be able to jump right where that Widow is going. Not managing to go, though. Great micro from Kingstead. Able to stop that firework again. Does die in the process to a Widowmaker, but that's fine. This time around, the firewall forces are there, and the Hermits should be able to take care of the fire Firewalker. There it is. The Firewalker is done. And with that, Gorda will have far less of an ability to hold the map. Kingstad still has to deal with the Jacks, but without that Firewalker, it's at least possible to do so without losing all their army in the process to the fire. The Recluses can do their job now. That's the key thing here. Of course, Gorda does have the economy to then produce another Firewalker, and they just don't have as much, much in the way of production. They're actually having a similar problem to what Kingstad had before, but now Kingstad has the pressure. Now they have the Recluses. Now they can get rid of these Constables and the Jacks and possibly the Stinger, and make it that much harder for Gorda to maintain this center hill. And if that happens, well then Kingstad just takes a massive advantage. And also, Kingstad, love it! They pulled their jack- they pulled the Stardust- I don't think it's gonna be quite enough though, I'm pretty sure it's still in range of the jack. Good thinking, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that the jack is not really gonna be too peeved. It's actually just gonna get up here, and yeah, still in range. A little bit higher next time, Kingstad. I, th I think it's like 100 Elmos at that point, and then you're fine. Actually, it should say here. It is 125 Elmo. So yeah, raise it up 125 Elmo off the ground, and you're fine. But yeah, that is going to be... That is it. I mean, it's just... Man. At this point, Kingstad does have enough recklessness. They can, they can provide pressure. Clearly going for more of a flanking maneuver, but the problem, as far as I can see, is that the another Firewalker's up, again. But also, I mean, Gorda has just been gradually getting economy. They've been gaining ground all around the map, especially the southeast side of the map. And while they haven't pushed in too much, they've been biding their time, setting up their forces. They know they can't easily push through the Recklesses until the Firewalker gets in, this Firewalker in particular. But once they do that, the Recklesses again are having a bit of a hard time. And this is a bit of an issue with the matchup overall. The Spider Factory has little in the way of lightweight units that can properly raid. The lightest weight raider type thing it has is the, re is the Redback, and that's a Riot unit. That's not a raider. It's like 200 metal each. So Venom Redback can do good work, but Fleas just cannot survive anything in the way of any kind of defense, really. So that limits what can be done against Firewalkers up close. That limits what can be done against the Moderators. That really just overall limits Spiderbot's lightweight options and ability to raid across the map. Like, Assault Units, that's your option. Use Hermits, use 
breadbacks, you don't really have the option to use fleas. Not when some of the lotuses have been built, and that's really why Gorda has built them. That limits the flea movement, but now there is an, there is an avenue. There's a nice little opening here that does mean that Gorda could have fleas into their main base, into these metal extractors, possibly into about 7 metal per second worth. 4 metal per second worth, corrected, because the Recklesses managed to take care of one of those extractors. And actually, I do like the fact that this force is split. Kingstad basically baiting the Firewalker over to the eastern side of the map with a small force of Recklesses, still able to do some economic damage, while at the same time, the larger force over to the north should be able to sweep in, take out the center, possibly even take out the main base if they decide to go for it. So great split here, pulling Golda's forces completely out of position. Kingstead, you should be able to take this from here. You have the economic advantage, you have a military advantage to an extent. You certainly are able to tear apart a bunch of the economy that Golda has built up. It's just a matter of making sure your, fire, your recklessness do not die to the Firewalker. And that might be possible. In fact, the recklessness here are already just taking advantage of the cliffs on the sides. Not much can be done. These metal extractors are done. Although I do like this move here. Golda coming up with a jack to try to stop that. I mean, it is jump bot, so they do have the option of going all terrain just like spiders. It's just a bit more limited. However, those recklesses, again, they just don't have any support. There's no redbacks or venoms with them. So those pyros can just have a field day. Still, though, there's fleas coming in here. So it's still an option because, again, there was an avenue opened up. Like, this entire area here can be just waltzed through by fleas, in theory. Or the northwest. I mean, it looks like that's going to be the option. Go along the northwest area. The little lowlands there. And that could do the trick. But, again, it's just very tricky because fleas, if they encounter any resistance, will die. They're only 20 metal each, but... Even then, that's still not much when you consider that they'll die in groups. If they kill a metal extractor, they'll die. Like, they are the most fragile unit in the game, like 40 HP. Every death explosion in the game will kill them, so you gotta be careful. However, at this point... Oh, crap. Oh, I like it. That is neat. I don't... I'm curious how well it'll work. We'll find out. But the answer is well enough, actually. Getting in range of the Firewalker, getting in range of the Stinger. If that Stinger is gone, that will open up most of this north side. Pretty much all the mid-weight units that were coming in could go through the Stinger and not work where the Stinger was and not worry about it. The Firewalker is still a bit of a pain, but hey, there's likely to be another Widow coming up sooner or later. Kingstad not going for it right now, but they most likely will. And again, there's the Fleas going on the north side of the map, and I don't know if Gold is aware of this. And it looks like they are indeed aware that there is something, and I, I would assume they'd assume it's Fleas. It's the only fast unit available. Unless they figure Kingstad went for a sneaky gunship switch or a cloaky switch or something. But not, no, Gunship. Gunship's the only option. It went up the cliffs. But nope, those are fleas. And there's nothing in the way of resistance there at all. There's a Lotus. That's it. The Jack, however, so much HP on the Jack. It's not going to matter. The Constables might go down. The Factory might, oh, Factory might go down? No, the Windjens might go down. Maybe. But not even. This is what I mean by fleas. It's like, the fleas might have had a chance. I think if Kings had decided on Windjens, it could have worked. But yeah, that's the thing with fleas. That's a bit of a pain. They just can't get in. Especially not against 6,000 HP of Jack. You cannot get through that. The Venoms have a decent-ish time. It still takes a while for them to stun, but they have at least something of a decent time to get through. And nothing else really does. So, yeah, that's the thing here. Golda just able to push through with sheer weight of units. And the fact that the Spider Factory simply doesn't have much to swipe, to sweep through that and tear them apart. I Hermits kind of work. Redbacks work reasonably well. But again, it's just so much HP. There's so much that has to be worked through in order to make any real dent in the army full of jacks. That ultimately, Kingstead, if, I think if they had more production early on, they would have been able to build a large enough army to make it not as big of a problem to allow them to win when they had the advantage about 10 minutes into the game. But at this point, Gorda has just won by attrition. The simple fact is that Gorda has been able to convert their economy into production reasonably quickly and never really excess. I mean, granted, they had a weak economy early on, but their good micro saved them. And good unit choice of the Firewalker as well saved them. I honestly think that Kingstead would have been well served by switching over to Gunship. Getting out a handful of Harpies or something and then start sweeping around. Or a handful of Locusts start sweeping around. Gota was not really prepared for that. So having... If that had been done, it would have been a bit of a risky play, but it would have worked. Or would likely have worked. Still, though, it looks like Kingstead does have a possible chance here. Going for a bit of a last stand. Able to get rid of quite a few Jacks in the process. Gota, I should point out, does have 30 metal per second going into their factory. So these Jacks can be rebuilt reasonably quickly. It takes about... Now, well, one of them takes about 20 seconds. So, this is not nothing. I mean, it's, it is worth getting rid of the jacks, but again, it's also not great. It's not nothing. It's not ideal. The jacks are not being killed that quickly. And this is a problem for Kingstead. Ooh, especially with this metal here. I mean, they might be able to get in here, but it looks like Kingstead is going to throw in the towel, and that is going to be game. Nicely done, both players. I really enjoyed that. That was that was a nice and even game. I mean, look at the metal income. It was dead even. 
for the most part. And King's Head did have a large advantage primarily, and you kind of need that because, again, gold is great at attrition. Gold is really good at making sure that you do not actually deal any meaningful damage to them. So that was well done. That was well played. I liked it. So anyway, that is going to be it for me to... How do I pause? Like, can I seriously reset my pause key? Crap. Okay, well, anyway. Thank you for watching, everyone. I think it's going to be it for me tonight. But, yeah, that was a good demonstration of Spider vs. Jumpbot. Seemed like it really favors spiders early on, and Jumpbot, once they get jacks going, it's just over. But anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight, so thank you for watching. I really wish I could pause this game. I accidentally reset my settings earlier. Did I seriously reset the pause key? No, I didn't. Still control backslash. What the heck? Okay, whatever. Anyway, yeah, so thanks for watching. That is going to be it for me tonight. I probably will do Battle Right Wednesday, as usual. Definitely going to do 0k again on Saturday, as I always do. And I will eventually get those YouTube videos, or videos on YouTube. I probably will set that up tomorrow. Anyway, other than that, thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.